Indenting bonding agents. Bonding agents can bring a strong bond between the composite and the tooth structure to withstand mechanical forces and stresses. The use of denting bonding agents markedly reduces the need to provide mechanical retention. So let's first take a look at the historical background of it. The foundation for adhesives was made in 1955 when Dr. Michael Bionacore proposed that acids could be used to alter the surface of enamel to make it more receptive to adhesion. This hypothesis was based on industrial use of 85% of phosphoric acid for about 30 seconds. A couple of years later, in 1957, Dr. Ray Bowen introduced the concept of BIS-GMA resin system. In 1979, Dr. Tekao Fujiyama introduced the concept of total etch, wherein both enamel and dentine are simultaneously etched with 37% phosphoric acid for 15 seconds. Following this, the tooth is washed and gently dried to leave the dentine surface moist so as to prevent collapse of the exposed collagen network. Next, a primer is applied. These are hydrophilic monomers dissolved in organic solvents. The final step involves application of the adhesive resin, which copolymerizes with the prime dentine and also with the composite resin applied over it. In 1982, Dr. Nubo Nakabayashi introduced the hybrid layer concept. Hybridization is the structure formed in dental heart tissues by demineralization of the surface and subsurface, followed by infiltration of monomers and subsequent polymerization. The interdiffusion of the low viscosity monomers into the exposed collagen network and the intertubular dentine to form a micromechanical bond with dentine lead to the formation of a hybrid layer which is a resin dentine interdiffusion zone. This concept is applied in case of fourth generation dentine bonding agents. Now let's take a look at some key terms associated with dentine bonding agents which will enable us to understand the topic better. So dentine bonding agent according to any device it is a thin layer of resin between conditioned dentine and the resin matrix of a composite. So the blue line here indicates the dentine bonding agent. Dentine conditioner is an acidic agent that dissolves the inorganic structure in dentine, resulting in a collagen mesh that allows infiltration of an adhesive resin, which you can see here as a light gray line. Hybrid layer, as mentioned, is an intermediate layer of resin, collagen and dentine produced by acid etching of dentine and resin infiltration into the conditioned dentine. Primer is a hydrophilic low viscosity resin that promotes bonding to a substrate such as dentine. They improve the wettability of adherence and are also capable of being incorporated into the surface of the substance to form chemical bonds across the interface. Commonly used primers are 30 to 35 percent of HEMA, that is hydroxyethyl methacrylate, 16 percent of biphenyl dimethacrylate, or 2 to 5 percent of N-toliglycine glycidyl methacrylate. Smear layer is a poorly adherent layer of ground dentine produced by cutting a dentine surface. So in the image here, you can see. In the center, there is a dentinal tubule which has been opened following tooth preparation. It is outlined by peritubular dentine which is in turn surrounded by intertubular dentine and on the surface you can see the smear layer which is marked by red. This is a scanning electron microscopic image of the smear layer. It is composed of dentine particles, bacteria and salivary constituents. It is thickest when the tooth is cut by means of a coarse diamond point without a coolant. The smear layer is easily washed away from the enamel but it remains adherent to the dentine surface. The smear layer may be removed, dissolved or modified before applying dentine bonding agents. So these were a few key terms worth noting. Dentine bonding agents, dentine conditioner, hybrid layer, primer and smear layer. Acid etching of enamel is one of the most effective ways to improve mechanical bonding and to ensure sealed interfacial gaps. 
This procedure has markedly expanded the use of resin-based restorative materials because it provides a strong bond between resin and enamel. So this is an electron microscopic image of the surface of etched enamel. Unlike the normal untreated enamel surface, etched enamel has a higher total surface energy which ensures that a resin will readily wet the surface and penetrate into the resulting microporosity. Once the resin penetrates into the microporosity, it can be polymerized to form resin tags that produce a mechanical bond to the enamel. So in this image here, this is a scanning electron microscopic image wherein you can see the penetration of resin into the etched areas of enamel. So the resin was applied to the etched enamel and the enamel was then dissolved by acid to reveal the tag. So the enamel in the center appears black whereas the resin tags are seen in white. These resin tags may penetrate 10 to 20 microns into the enamel porosity. The surface must be kept clean and dry until the resin is placed to form a sound mechanical bond. Till date, phosphoric acid is the most widely used agent for bonding to enamel and dentine. It is used in a typical concentration of 37%, ranging between 35 to 40%. At concentrations above 50%, it tends to form monocalcium phosphate monohydrate which gets deposited and inhibits further dissolution. At concentrations less than 25%, it forms dicalcium phosphate dihydrate precipitates. Once the tooth is etched, the acid should be rinsed away thoroughly with a stream of water for about 20 seconds and the enamel must be dried completely. When the enamel is dry, it should have a white frosted appearance indicative of the proper etching treatment. The application time of the agent may vary somewhat depending on previous exposure of the tooth surface to fluoride. For example, where a permanent tooth needs to be etched for 15 to 30 seconds, a permanent tooth with a high fluoride content derived from a fluoride water supply may require a somewhat longer etching time. And similarly, primary teeth also need a longer time for etching. So for deciduous teeth, they need to be etched for 45 to 60 seconds, whereas fluorose teeth needs to be etched for 60 to 90 seconds. Acid etching increases surface energy of enamel about 2000 times to produce monomer infiltration to seal enamel surfaces with resins. Enamel etching results in five different micromorphologic pattern, which was described by Silverstone et al. in 1975. These images have been taken from an article Acid Etching Patterns on Buccal Surfaces of Permanent Teeth authored by Gellil and Wright from the Journal of Pediatric Dentistry. Type 1 pattern involves the dissolution of prism cores without dissolution of prism peripheries and it is termed as a honeycomb pattern. The type 2 etching pattern resembles cobblestone appearance. The peripheral enamel is dissolved but the cores are left intact. The type 3 also resembles a cobblestone appearance. It is a combination of type 1 and type 2 configurations. Type 4 pattern has a pitted enamel surface which displays only a random distribution of depressions with no preferential destruction of either cores or peripheries. These pitted areas occasionally occur in little patches over the enamel surface. Type 5 has a flat, smooth surface after etching. It is quite similar to type 4 pattern, shows no evidence of prism outlines, but it lacks microregularities for penetration and retention of resins. While bonding to enamel is predictable, bonding to dentin is not so easy. Dentin poses greater obstacles to adhesive bonding than enamel firstly because it is a living tissue. It is heterogeneous and consists of 50% volume of inorganic material like hydroxyapatite, 30% in volume of organic material mainly type 1 collagen and 20% of fluid. Its high fluid content places stringent requirements on materials that can be effective adhesive agents between dentin and a restorative material. Dentin also exhibits regional variation in dentin permeability. So in these images you can see 
the variation in the dentinal tubules in different regions of dentine, the superficial and the deep intertubular dentine. The intertubular dentine has longitudinally or obliquely oriented collagen fibers with interfibular space of about 15 to 20 nanometers, whereas peritubular dentine has open tubule orifices in typical funnel shaped configuration and circularly oriented collagen fibril arrangement. So it has decreased surface energy with increased surface roughness. So the complex histologic structural and variable composition makes it difficult to bond dentine. So how should a dental adhesive be in order to adequately bond to dentine? Ideally, dentine adhesives should have a hydrophilic as well as a hydrophobic part. So the hydrophilic part wets the surface of slightly moist conditioned dentine, whereas the hydrophobic group ensures bonding to the restorative resin. The molecules that were designed for these purposes can be represented by an MRX molecule, where M is a methacrylate group, which is the hydrophobic part. R is a spacer, such as a hydrocarbon chain, which makes the molecule large whereas X is a functional group that is targeted for adhesion to tooth tissue, so it is the hydrophilic part. Typical phosphate X groups were believed to bond to calcium during dentine priming. Then during polymerization, the methacrylate group of the MRX molecule would react with the resin matrix of the composite material and form a chemical bond between composite and dentine. So this was the first part of denting bonding agents. We looked at the history of denting bonding agents, the acid etching technique, the etching patterns as given by Silverstone et al., difficulties in bonding to dentine, and dental adhesives. In the next presentation, we shall look at the classification of denting bonding agents, the various generations from generation 1 to generation 8. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.